This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. There is a heaven. There is a hell. There are demons, there are angels, there is a God, and there is a Satan. And you and I will see the conclusion of this matter. But I ain't going out losing. The Bible says he's coming back for what kind of church? A victorious, glorious church. You can interact with Creflo Dollar Ministries anytime, anywhere with our state-of-the-art, custom-designed app. The new Creflo Dollar Ministries app gives you unlimited access to numerous features. With the broadcast feature, you can access your favorite messages and more. The app puts you right in the sanctuary with live streaming of services. To get connected via the new Creflo Dollar Ministries app, visit creflodollarministries.org slash app or text app to 51555 today. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. Are y'all ready to live the supernatural life? Now, now I, I want to I show you something now. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Now, I, now stay with me now. They stand bush like I. Now, we human physically in a physical body we abide and live and exist in the physical realm. Everything in this realm is physical. We have a physical body so we can comprehend physical things. But at the same time that this physical realm is running, at the same time, Concurrently, at the same time that the physical world is running, there is a spiritual world that is in operation at the exact same time. I taught a sermon, what, Ken, 40 years ago, is the physical world really real? Now, I want you to think about something now. You have to be careful not to think that the only things that are real are the things that you can see. Right now, you are not the only beings in the presence in this dome. Physically, we can see you. But if God were to open your eyes up, you would be able to see all of our angels in here as well at the same time. And it becomes hard for people to comprehend and to believe what they can't see. Mm. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And, and, and the problem is, is we've been deceived by, oh, by, by thinking that, that this realm is, is the only real thing. And, and you've got to understand that this is not, the physical world is not the parent over the spiritual world. In other words, the physical world did not produce the spiritual world. The spiritual world is the parent over the physical world. In other words, every pattern in this physical world came from a spiritual world. I, 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 thought, I thought the other day, the Bible, here, people don't really, 
He says, whatever you bind on earth literally says is what is already bound in heaven. So what he is saying is we should be the reflection of what already is in the spiritual world. Your physical body is the reflection of your spirit man. You think that you're going to be less real when you shed your physical body. But when you get out of the physical world, you're going to enter into the spiritual world, which is more real to the physical world and the fierce spiritual world that gave birth to this physical world. So your body is a reflection of what you're going to be like in the, in the spiritual world. You'll have a spirit suit in the spiritual realm surrounded by spiritual matter, just like you have a physical suit in the physical realm surrounded by physical matter. That's why I ain't nobody, I ain't scared to die because I'm just moving from one realm to the original realm that's responsible for all other realms. Glory be to God. Yeah. <sighs> let's, let's read this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 18. Read it out loud with me. Ready? Read. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are All right, now let's milk this scripture. Keep it up there for a moment. While we look not at the things which are seen, literally here, this word seen is not specifically talking about seen with your eyes. He is saying while we look not at the things that we can comprehend with our sensory mechanisms, all of the things you can pick up with your sensory mechanism, the thing you can see, you touch, you can, you can smell, uh, all that, all that your senses can perceive, we're not looking at what your senses, we're not going to be looking at what your senses can perceive only. Of course, God gave you senses to be used in this physical, natural world, mostly to protect you, let you know when that's hot. Let you know, train come and move. <laughs> We're not, we're not looking at the things we're seeing. Now, th what, this is what we're doing in, 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 amongst Christians. That's exactly what we're doing. We are focused in on all the stuff we can see. He says, don't look at that, but we look at the things which are not seen. Well, how can you look at what can't be looked at? What is he saying? For we are not but we, but, 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 but we look at the things which are not seen or the things that can't be picked up with our sensory mechanisms. Why? He says, now, if you choose to live your life by your senses, and if you choose to allow your senses to govern your life, he says, you're going to be limited from the things that I can do supernaturally. For the things which are seen or can be picked up with your sensory mechanisms are going to be temporary. They're going to be temporary. See, what you don't understand is that if something hits your body and it's a disease, he says, it'll be temporary if you're not allowing it to govern you. You look at your financial situation as bad, it'll only be temporary if you don't allow yourself to be governed by it. You look at every crazy thing that can happen in this realm, it will only be temporary. You know, that is, that's the truth, Lord. The Lord just spoke to me. He says, well, whether you decide to be governed by it or not, all this stuff is temporary. He's, everything you can see and pick up right now is temporary. 
You'll go in neighborhoods. I went in the neighborhood I grew up at, and it's not even there no more. It was temporary. It was temporary. The things you can see are temporary. But now watch this. Put it back up. He says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, 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 now listen to me carefully. This spirit realm is the eternal realm. This physical realm is temporary. And God is saying that you and I can begin eternity while we're in the physical world if we start paying attention to the things that we have access to in this spiritual world. Sickness is temporary. Healing is eternal. Poverty is temporary. Prosperity is eternal. Worry is temporary. Peace is eternal. I'm going to switch. I'm going to start living by those eternal, those eternal things. And I'm going to start checking out those eternal things. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by the eternal Word of God. Does everybody see this? If we don't teach this, if you don't hear this, if you don't start spending time thinking about this, you won't know how people operate in the supernatural realm while they're still in their physical body because you've never thought about that before. Please let me make sure you understand something. You will die one day. When you die, you're going to step up out of your body. The strange thing about it is that you, it's going to be very hard to tell whether you're in the body or out of the body because you stepped out of a reflection into the reality. You just want to make sure when you step out, you, are, you have arrived at the right address. Somebody said, where we at? Well, the sign says 666 hell. <laughs> you better make your reservations right now to 777 Heaven Boulevard. <laughs> the issue is not death. That's not the problem. You just got to make sure you got the right address. See, that's why the, 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 the demons are busy right now. There's so much demonic influence. The demonic influence is all about kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. The devil trying to just get people out of the way. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Those demons come and they influence you. They speak to you. They're telling you to do stupid stuff. It starts off with you're so depressed or you switch to something that gave those demons authority to be in your life. You know, you're doing some kind of weird religion thing, you know. You're, you're, you're messing around with vibrations and all that other kind of stuff. You're, you're, you're substituting the only God that exists with other stuff, and you're listening to doctrines of demons, and so you're giving place for those demons to come. And they're abiding in your life, but you don't know it right now. And then all of a sudden, you, when you start, you'll get strong depression. You'll get this strong loneliness. You'll get this strong will to give up. And, 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 and it's all leading to, to those in, demonic influence saying, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Now, they operate in the spirit realm too. You know, man is a threat to the devil because, you know, men took uh, authority over angels, you understand, and over demons. What is man that thou art mindful of them who visiteth him and you do such things? I, I, even angels are submitted to men. Do you know that you're going to judge the angels one day? You understand how powerful you are and the authority that God gave you, but you don't see how the demonic forces are working against you. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you, you decide, you heard something say, kill yourself. And if, if you don't do it, you know, you, the way you talk to your therapist, you say, well, something told me to kill myself. It wasn't no something. It was a demon that you somehow opened the door and let that demon force come on the inside, and either he's oppressing you or, 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 or possessing you, and, and we don't even know what's going on. You, 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 all you got to do is look in the eyes of people, you know, when they go and they're shooting everybody, and, and they just don't know what's going on. You can see that these people are under influence. 
but the world won't ever go that way. They will never think about that because their solution is, oh, they need therapy. Oh, they need mental health. Listen, I worked there. I saw demon after demon. I cast some of them out. The boy was psychotic. He was walking around all psychotic and everything. And I'm just like, is he going to walk around like that? And then you gave him drugs, which amplified it and gave those demons more of an opportunity to be there. And, and, and I felt sorry for the guy one day. I said, I said come in. Come on. Mm. Come on. I got that boy saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and cast the devil out of him. In one week, he was discharged. They checked on him months later. He was doing fine. He was under a demonic influence. One guy came in one time. He was under demonic influence. He says, I'm Jesus Christ. I said, well, Jesus, we're going to lock you up right now because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of creepy. Later at night, and you ain't got but a few staff on there, and then they come and admit somebody. He's talking about he Jesus Christ and growling at the same time. Oh, no, I come from College Park. I don't do all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I ain't the investigative type. You understand what I'm saying? Lock Jesus up. Put Jesus in the BCR, and somebody else will see him tomorrow. <laughs> We'll leave a word for one of your disciples to come and visit you, Jesus. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? So here's this physical world that we live in. Here's this supernatural world that's responsible for giving birth to this physical world. The things you cannot see are more real than the things you can see. All right, we're talking about living in supernatural now, so don't be, be freaking out and stuff like that. I'm just getting this part over with so you don't have to deal with it, but you, you're going to have to deal with this because there, there are probably more people under demonic influence today as a result of the pandemic, as a result of the locking in. See, y'all might have, some of y'all might have locked in in a nice place. Some of these people didn't have a lot of nice places to lock into, and there's some weird stuff going on. And, and, and I have never dealt with so many people who want to kill themselves. Mental health issues. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are demonic possession issues. We don't want to talk about that. But I'm going to be bold enough. I'm going to be the church to talk about all of the stuff that don't nobody believe in no more, that don't nobody talk about no more, because we're getting ready to do some supernatural living. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Romans chapter 8, and verse 24. Now watch this. I'm so excited about your lives. You're getting ready to go to another level. Oh, the devil hates this because all I'm doing is exposing him. So if you run into it, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, there is power and authority invested in the name of Jesus. You remember in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Sceva? See, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. They were professional exorcists. Y'all read this, right? It's in the Bible, right? And so they go up there, and, and, and uh, these guys, these people were possessed with demons, and they walk up in there as professional exorcists, and they say, okay, we cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Now, can you imagine? They're walking in there, and the demon's like, we cast you out in the name of Jesus Paul preaches. <laughs> And the scripture says, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? Let me say this. If you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, every demon knows who you are. And I believe the Bible says they jumped on them stripped them of their clothes, and ran them out. This is serious stuff. This is stuff that people don't talk about no more, and then stuff just happens, and then the world gives it another name, and you ignore the bottom line issue. 
and you ignore this bottom line issue, just like you ignore the bottom line issue of this supernatural world, this spiritual world running at the same time that this physical world. And until you understand that, you won't know how to successfully operate in victory because all of these wonderful things that are in the spiritual world. Heaven has already been set. You know, there's another scripture to talk about how the tabernacle in Moses' day was taken from the pattern that was in heaven already. Amen. The pattern of the tabernacle was a, as the pattern of the heavenly tabernacle. There is a heaven. There is a hell. There are demons, there are angels, there is a God, and there is a Satan. And you and I will see the conclusion of this matter. But I ain't going out losing. The Bible says he's coming back for what kind of church? A victorious, glorious church. Now watch this, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. That's the truth. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? If I could see the thing, it wouldn't be hope. So our hope is based on what we can't see. And you know what kind of society we have now? A hopeless society. Because they're basing everything on what they can see. And we're basing things on what the Word of God has to say. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7, flip over there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. Man, I am so looking forward to this, this time I spend with you now. Now, some of you are like, oh, I ain't going back there. All that demon talking got to me. See, now you got fear. And fear is the faith of the devil. The thing you fear the most will come upon you. Don't walk in fear. God hadn't given you no spirit of fear. So if God didn't give you a spirit of fear, guess where it's coming from? Stop it. Get out of fear. The Bible says here in verse 7, for we walk by what? And not by our sensory mechanism. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by what the Word says. I'm walking by the things that I cannot see. I'm walking by faith. I walk by faith. I don't walk by my sensory mechanism. I am, it, it is not so just because it exists in this physical world. It is not so just because I can feel it in my body. It is not so just because I can't see something in my bank account. I don't walk by that. I don't live by that. I live by God's Word. That's what it means to be a Christian. I am moved by His Word. I'm moved by his promises. I consider his promise. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11, in verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, which means you can't see it. It's the substance of things that you don't see right now. It's some things hoped for. The evidence of faith can't be seen. It's, I hope for it, but I can't see it. I hope for it, but I might not be able to feel it. Faith is unseen substance. Somebody say, what's that? It's the Word of God. Faith, the Word of God. In fact, let me put it this. Now, the Word of God is the substance of things hoped for. And the Word of God is the evidence of the things that you can't see. So, w w what is it? What's going on? You're a Christian, but you don't get in the Word. You don't believe in the Word. It's not necessary. Oh, I come and get the Word so I can fulfill my quota as a Christian. No, 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 no. The Word of God is the substance of things hoped for. So, my hope comes from the Word. We started off with that today. My hope comes from the Word. But the Word of God is also my evidence of things that I can't see yet. Why do I have the Word of God as my evidence of things I can't see yet? Because when the devil shows up and tells me what's not, I say, no, you're wrong. Here's my evidence. I show him my evidence. By his stripes, I'm healed. That's the, that's the only thing I got right now. And I'm not going to let go of that word because that's all I got. 
I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. But all I got is the Word of God. And the Word is my evidence. Glory be to God. Just like your title deed is the evidence that you actually own your car. I don't have to see your car. Just show me your, your title deed, and I believe you got a car. Well, it's the same way. It's the same way. You know, I believe I'm healed. Where's your title deed? Isaiah 53. Glory to God. First Peter, I got evidence from God's Word. I can't show you the manifestation of my healing right now. So until it shows up, I'm going to hold on to my confirmation of what I know. Do you feel hopeless or trapped in a downward spiral? The truth may be that you're not living in the supernatural. In his thought-provoking four-message series, The Power of Supernatural Living, Creflo Dollar teaches that everything God promised us exists in the supernatural realm. When you send your words from God's Word out and they penetrate this supernatural realm, they come back with a deposit. And the Bible says like rain that waters the flowers, one day it will begin to bloom. It's time for you to call things that be not as though they were. It's time for you to be above and never again beneath. We are living in the supernatural. For a love gift of 25 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling, these lessons can be yours today. Do not miss this blessing. Call the number on your screen or go to www.creflodollarministries.org and click e-store to secure yours while supplies last. Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app brings you live church services direct to your smart TV and much more. You'll also get access to Changing Your World Network, streaming grace messages and exclusive content 24 hours a day right in the app. Get unlimited streaming through Roku, Amazon, and Apple TV absolutely free. Visit your app store. Download the Creflo Dollar Ministries TV app now to start streaming. For more information, visit CreflodollarMinistries.org. Creflo Dollar Global Missions has fed, clothed, housed, and shared the gospel of grace with people on practically every continent. I want to take a moment to encourage you to visit our website and catch up on all the missions work we're doing around the world. You may never visit these places or witness the poverty and levels of human suffering firsthand, but your support, prayers, and selfless giving equipped us to go and to change lives for the better. Thank you for caring enough to proactively take steps to stop misfortune in the lives of others. And thank you. If you want to support our global missions outreach endeavors, consider becoming a partner today by calling in or by visiting us online and signing up. Thank you for partnering with us today. When you give, your gift goes to work, spreading the gospel, uplifting communities, connecting believers from all over the world. It's easy to support the ministry with your giving through Change Express. The process of giving has never been easier for those on the go, so get started today. Go to www.creflodollarministries.org forward slash Change Express now to sign up for Change Express. Easy, automatic giving. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.